Taking a look now at backup power manufacturer Generac, the shares are down this morning a little under 2%, but the stock has been on a tear up over 30% in the past year, and those gains are outpacing the S&P. This upside does come after experts have predicted a very active hurricane season to come here uh, with potential for five major hurricanes coming up in the summer. And joining us now to discuss, we have Generac CEO Aaron Yogfeld. Aaron, thank you so much for being here Thanks. with us this morning. So we we were talking a little bit in the break about the read through of the macro inflation picture to right. your stock price and to the company, of course. So I'm just curious how much of a macro impact is there? Yeah, I think, um, you know, higher interest rates obviously add costs to the kinds of products that uh, that we sell. So whether you're talking about solar plus storage, or you're talking about generators, these are home improvement projects and mm -hmm. higher interest rates generally, you know, make that a more expensive purchase. Mm -hmm. And what are you seeing from consumers just in terms of spending trends, whether or not they actually are holding back on some of these larger ticket purchases? Yeah, I think when it comes to a discretionary purchase, I think then, you know, you will see some pullback there just naturally. I think the interesting thing about our products is when there is an outage though, yeah. right? If you get a hurricane mm -hmm. or if you get uh, a large storm, suddenly those purchases that I think people think of as discretionary become, you know, absolute nece necessities. Yeah. So that changes. Typically, the interest rates don't hurt us that much when we see outage activity. The outage activity was a little bit hot to start the year, cooled off the last couple of months, but we're just now getting into the season. So we'll see how it turns out. How do you prepare for that from a supply chain perspective? Well, it, we've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, we have to basically, you know, we have to plan as if there's going to be a, a season and there generally is. So we make our plans, we produce our products, we carry a lot of inventory as a result. So if you looked at our balance sheet, you'd see that. Mm -hmm. But that's part of what we do as a company. We're ready for the events when they happen. You just don't always know when or where they're going to happen, but we have to be ready to react. You certainly have uh, made some strategic moves with the company over the last couple of years, uh, recently uh, adding a few more uh, acquisitions here to your business, to the portfolio. Why does that make sense? And do you, con do you expect that trend to continue just in terms of more acquisitions in the pipeline? Yeah, for us, I mean, historically, we've been a backup generator yeah. company, right? So when the power goes out, our products go into the market, and hopefully they, you know, people are happy about that. We really have thought about things on a macro basis over the last five to six years. We look at the transition that's taking place in energy, mm -hmm. transition in the grid, right? From the old grid to the new grid, 1.0 to 2.0 or 3.0. Mm. I don't know which version of it we're on right now, but really moving into more of an energy technology space. So broadening out, not just about resiliency, but also about the cost of energy and, and conservation being an important element of that. So what changes have you made to your business as a result of that? So we've been broadening into areas like um, smart thermostats as an example, right? So it's not just about backup power, it's about all the energy in your home, EV charging. It's another mm -hmm. really important space uh, that, you know, as, as we pick up adoption for EVs, that is going to put an, an enormous amount of power uh, needs on the grid. Mm -hmm. And so being able to control that and being able to manage that is going to be super critical for not only homeowners, but grid operators as well. You also have AI putting pressure on the grid. Well, AI is a whole new story, right? It's a whole new part of the story. And that's that the needs of energy are projected to triple in AI just in the next five years. And that's it's basically the equivalent of adding like 40 million new households mm -hmm. to the grid. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a tremendous amount of power. And I don't think it's one of those areas that it's come on so quickly that I think grid, uh, you know, grid operators and utilities are really struggling to figure out how to, how to satisfy that demand. Mm. What does it mean more specifically for your business? Mm -hmm. Well, for us, obviously, you know, when you see increases in demand like that, and you also have situations on the supply side, as we work to decarbonize supply side, we're retiring coal plants mm -hmm. in favor of, you know, wind and solar, which is great, but those are intermittent sources instead of sources that can run 24 seven. So grid operators really have a significant challenge ahead of them in terms of balancing supply and demand. What we know in our business and watching this kind of play out over the last several decades is that reliability is on a downward trend. So, you know, people are experiencing more outages. And so our core business of providing backup power with generators or batteries has really been on a tear. Um, this new element of, of energy cost, I think this is the thing that's coming in the future, is as you try to take care of all of this added, you know, demand from AI, from EVs, all the things that are going, heat pumps, right? I mean, we're, we're converting everything in our homes to electrical uh, appliances. This is gonna drive uh, reliability, probably, unfortunately, for most people, are gonna experience more outages, uh, and that's only gonna be good for our business.
What do you anticipate if you were kind of looking at this from a policy perspective? What would be a helpful solution to that well, challenge? Well, you know, I, I do think some of the policy things that have come into play here in the last year with the IRA, yeah. those have been helpful. I, I do think that it's really important that we get focused on, uh, you know, trying to build up the supply chains that we need, whether it be around battery supply chains or you know, chip supply chains, these important technology supply chains are a critical element of this, but we need to do more. Uh, we need to have, you know, from solar production, right? We need to have more incentives around solar, more incentives around battery. Uh, I do think that, you know, it, it's a very complex problem. Um, the grid is a uh, 3,200 independent utility companies across the U.S., 3,200 uh, oversight bodies. So it's almost a one-to-one -one relationship. Wow. And it just creates um, a, a situation where it's very difficult to make change quickly. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, things like AI aren't going to wait for you know, the, the natural state of affairs to play out in, in their normal course. So uh, I do think that some policy-related things could be very helpful to help accelerate uh, some of these uh, things that need to get done. Aaron Yagfeld, we really appreciate you taking the time, especially joining us here in studio, CEO of Generac. Thanks so much, Aaron. Thank you.